Hey guys, XTCL Zero here again, and this is a passage of play from last Sunday night, which was the 23rd of December. Now I'm playing along with Alex or Automatic Meet again, and because we both had a long journey planned for Christmas Eve, we decided just to tire ourselves out by putting in what was in effect a, an all night session on planet side. We were then just going to sleep on the bus, the, the car, and the boat the next day while we were travelling. Now there was also a, a double XP event on, and uh, something that's also still on actually over the Christmas holidays, and uh, this is us making the most of it before having to go home to, to family and stuff. Now, the great thing about Planetside 2 is that there's a different story that just evolves each night you play it. And this is a particular highlight, something I just could not get out of my head the, the whole time I was home because it had been just so intense. So, to give you some sort of background here, we'd started the evening at the Crown on Endar, basically just trying to horse some XP. Uh, make the most of the double XP event after all, uh, but that was that was quieter than usual, and we we got bored. Uh, we were mostly just playing anti-aircraft, so we decided just to move over to Esmir and see what was going on there. The, this continent, as normal, was overrun by our faction, so we thought it'd be a good time maybe just to try practicing a bit of Liberator flying, test out for ourselves how OP the uh, the Zephyr is. Now the Zephyr is the the mortar attachment. It's uh, it's for the, one of the gunners for one of the gunner seats off the Liberator. Um, we'd heard a lot on the forums, and plus we've been on the receiving end of this thing, and there's there's suggestions that this thing is ridiculously overpowered. And this is the first time that we would actually spawned a Liberator since beta, so this uh, we hadn't really got to to try this thing for ourselves. So. I bought this thing with some station cash just to, just to see, and my god, it is ridiculous. You don't have to do anything uh, in your Liberator except sit back there and rake in kills and, and XP, you know. Um, or at least that's, that's the case for for Alex, who was in the gunner seat. Uh, as a pilot, all I had to do was uh, occasionally fly away to repair or find a, find a landing pad to rearm. But it was actually while we were rearming, um, at this place here, the Friar Amp Station, we came into one of the landing pads and uh, we decided to investigate um, who was overloading the shield generators and then we'd just maybe just defend the base if, if need be. And that, that's basically how we play this game, you know, we just just in a nutshell, we just investigate we things that are out of place and whether we're going to be outnumbered or not, we'll, we'll just uh, we'll, we'll just do what we can. You'd be surprised how often that also just leads to just something epic, like a really good passage to play that as, mm -hmm. as it did this, uh, this particular evening. So. It was clear anyway that once we got on the ground that there was uh, there was quite a number of people on the main flag and they were more likely to be we were up against a squad rather than just a lone wolf. So we tried to be smart. We tried to cut off the attacker spawn options, then come back, take them out. But as it turned out, we couldn't do it quickly enough. And there was also a couple of lightnings that were in the main tower, and that made it difficult for us to approach it. So in the end, we couldn't prevent the the base capture, but we saw this coming. We recognised it, um, and we realised this was uh, going to leave us with two uh, two uh, two choices. We could either hide until this uh, NC squad just wandered off their next target, as would be normal behaviour for uh, for an attacking squad, and then we could just simply recap it when there's nobody there, uh, just, just in peace. Or alternatively, we could just be a pain in the ass, uh, pick off a few kills while they, they uh, went about repairing stuff, which again would be their normal behaviour for, for a squad. And we decided just to be a pain. Uh, so, given that the opportunities are, we ducked into the main tower uh, via the back entrance here, which you can see me covering here at the moment, and we hold up behind the spawn control unit, or the, the SCU. Now, this room's normally protected by a shield, but since the generator was down, we could get in, okay, uh, just literally just as the as the flag flipped uh, or the base flipped now we were waiting to see what they would do but an NG turned up um, at the SCU quite early on so we shot him and that basically just made up our minds because the NC squad then just came and sort of descended on us from both sides we still didn't really have a plan but we just decided to see how long we could last and as it turned out as you can see just here we're lasting some time I was covering the back entrance using these stairs here just to minimize my profile just allowing them just to channel themselves through that corridor um, where it was easy just to take them out and in the meantime Alex was uh, mostly covering the other direction and when need be he'd come around to support me plus uh, vice versa now he was a medic um, so I could be a bit more liberal with my life than, than what he could be just with his, so that's, that's why I'm covering this particular area, which is seeing a bit more action. He could revive me, you see, whereas I wouldn't be able to uh, return a favour for him. After that, the main problem we'd run into was ammo, but uh, as it happened, I was still an engineer from flying the Liberator, so uh, I was able to keep us both supplied with ammo while Alex just kept us at full health. It's right about this time that we also realise that we've got some other randoms from our faction that are helping us out within the main VS compound. So we're we're hearing the occasional shield generator being overloaded. We did see somebody cross my line of uh, line of fire there a moment ago. They took some of the guys out on either side of this uh, this corridor. Um, 
we are starting to hear them being saved, the, the generator is being saved and repaired as well, and it does co coincide with a drop in the action that, that uh, is happening around about the SCU. We decide though that us actually holding this room is buying our faction some time, um, because without a spawn control unit action, the uh, are active, the defence are, are quite hampered. They don't have a sunder or a spawn beacon, then they're going to have to walk from one of the satellite bases surrounding the amp station, and that'll take them out of the fight for three or four minutes each time they die. So this is something we suspect has been happening, given that there's been quite a few gaps in the action. Uh, something I've cut from this video, but there 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 are drop offs a, a couple of minutes at a time, um, where where we've seen nothing. Around about this time, though, we're starting to see a bit more. Um, they're starting to set up turrets. On either side, and they've got a sniper covering as well, which makes it very difficult for us to approach and get a side on angle on these turrets. I stick up a turret here myself, uh, just as a distraction, really, so I could peek around the other side. Turns out I wasn't able to, but you know, it's, it's just one of the things you just try whenever you're uh, you, you kind of get stuck. Those, those big bright shields in front of the shields or in front of the turrets, they, they do tend to be um, to force the, the the other team into shooting them. You know, it's just a, it's like a moth to a flame. But um, we're we're quite worried now. Just I mean, what exactly they're doing here? Because they're they're pinning us now in behind the SCU. Uh, we we don't think that they're actually trying to contain us here. We think this is cover for an impending attack. We're starting to see people. We're, we're still seeing people coming in the back. We're we're still taking damage any time we peek out there. We are still peeking there just to make sure we're not going to get rushed. Um, while at the same time somehow surviving anything that comes in at the back. Now we did also see there was a heavy assault guy that uh, just came in there as well. So he uh, he pushes up front he starts using his rocket launcher to attack the front of those uh, those enemy turrets. That's finally going to cause them some proper damage. It might actually distract them long enough uh, for us to, to get past them. I stick down my own turret. Unfortunately there wasn't a uh, their their turrets weren't where I was expecting it, or um, or if it was, you know, it had been destroyed before I got here. But uh, what I do here is and and actually pins them into that uh, that right hand corner. Um, a couple of our guys are still shooting that, so I decided to peek out here and maybe take the turret from the side. But as it turns out, they actually TK each other. I think it was, or according to Alex, uh, and I take out the last guy, then take out the turret. Now, as you can see from above the mini map, uh, A has now got a, a green symbol around it, which indicates somebody else is is obviously here now from from our side, and they've actually capped the flag. Um, Alex and I, though, we decided to keep our defence on the SCU. Um, as without that, the NC have that logistical problem. They're still going to have to spawn quite some distance away. Um, it's going to hinder. It's, it's, we we feel that this has been the biggest hindrance to uh, uh, their efforts anyway, just to prevent our capture. Um, they are obviously still pressing this room, uh, which is uh, admirable, uh, considering how long they've been failing uh, to this point. Um, though having said that, having said that, I just feel there, expose myself a wee bit too much. But by the time I get revived here, we notice that A has now been flipped back to NC. So I decided to go back and investigate, yeah. leaving Alex down in the SCU room. He's a medic, so he's still our most important character. We don't want to really risk him on something that I'm about to do here, which is uh, really just to maintain our progress with the with the capture, um, which we don't really want to waste. Now, I should have had that guy. And uh, what on earth is this guy doing? <laughs> He's just creeping up there, and he doesn't react even to, to me just running past him twice. So, uh, anyway, I take him out, and then the 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 heavy assault he's sprinting um, he's they're always easy to take people out whenever they're sprinting because uh, you can you can shoot before they can react so and then we just uh, take over the flag and that's about it from from this point on i stick down a turret um i think i jump on this turret just in time for somebody to jump out at the uh, the lift surge straight ahead uh, but that's pretty much the the last of the action uh, once we kill this guy um, our cavalry have arrived, we st they've started clearing up everything in the compound, they get on this flag, we flip the base, and that's that. So we've uh, managed to turn this around and we've uh, maintained our presence without having to use any sort of spawn logistics or, or, or anything. Like we've uh, successfully taken this base and uh, a large part of that was just down to our two-man squad. So that, that was really well played from us, it was a really, really good bit of play to be involved in. That was so much fun. Uh, so intense at the time as well and we, we had no idea how that was going to end up but that's why this game is so good. But anyway guys, uh, thanks for watching and uh, please please like and uh, subscribe if you'd like to see some more. Um, please also comment as it really helps uh, build the channel.